Shalom to Rabbi Menachem Geli, uh, Chairman of the Standing Committee of uh, the Conference of European Rabbis, uh, gathering here in Minsk, Belarus. Good evening, good evening. So one of the important and really fascinating topics that you're talking about today, you're discussing today, is the issue of conversion. And one of the issues you're talking about is combining forces. Combining forces with Israel. Well, we need the support of Israel whichever way we go because we want Israel either to recognize what we're doing, which they do in any event when it's done through a Beddin Kavua in, in, in the diaspora, Israel recognize the conversions. Uh, we also want them to support us by not recognizing those that are not bona fide or those that are not, are not done correctly. We want them to support us in not recognizing it. And both are equally important. Now, it's not only about combining forces uh, with the State of Israel. It's also, you mentioned, a, a unified system, uh, unified with all the uh, communities in Europe. Okay, it's not going to be a unified system. It's going to try and unify standards somewhat, which is something all conferences try to do. Um, in, it's really a way of ensuring that at least minimal standards are upheld in the further flung places. And those places that are, have got strong Jewish communities, it normally isn't a problem. Um, even then, it's got to be looked carefully at, but those places where there is not a strong Jewish uh, infrastructure, that, that, that is cause for concern, and that is something we want to ensure that Judaism, uh, that the, the, the conversion is done properly and, and is upheld. So Rabbi Gilly, what, the, what kind of uh, problems and challenges brought upon the necessity for these uh, unified standards? Um, it's an ongoing uh, issue wh whereby we know that conversions are being done sometimes under par, less than they ought to be. And it's just something we know, we always have to rectify. There was no particular trigger at this time. It's ongoing. And one of the, uh, the, the terms you used or the statements was that a conversion is not like shopping in a supermarket. What, what, no, the, the, that means to say is that people, the conversion should always be left in the first instance to the place of where they reside, their place of residence. So the local Bet Din or the, the, the country's Bet Din should attend to it in the first instance. People should not go elsewhere and if they do, anybody turns up in a foreign country and they're coming from somewhere else and want to convert, that should be a warning system. Hey, why is he in France if he's from England? Why is he in Italy if he's from England? Or why is he in England if he's from Italy? And the answer is, he's probably trying to get out of their jurisdiction because they know things that they don't want you to know. And today you're mentioning uh, situations and uh, stories where the conversion is actually not recognized. How does that happen? Well, Israel have that system whereby, and it's a very good system, whereby um, si single rabbis who do not conform to official Batei Din will perform a conversion on one of the congregants and then send a letter to Israel. Uh, they may move later to Israel, want to marry in Israel, and they'll tell uh, Israel that um, they'll want a letter that this person is Jewish by conversion. And... Um, such Israel will say we don't recognize the conversion of this particular rabbi and they do that they've got a, they've got a list who they recognize who they don't recognize and when one is not recognized the conversion is not recognized what do you do so the wherever they land up the their new place of residence should take it into hand and if they're sincere and honest they should look after them and try and regularize the gerut which means to say reconvert them if you want. In terms of procedure, it's a reconversion. Uh, and, and look after them and help them. And if they're insincere, then say, we, I'm sorry, we can't, be, we, we can't deal with you. Now in the news, when we hear about conversion, it's a lot of times involved with lots of politics. And, and also here, we're, we're seeing the debates and the issues and what could be done and procedures. But I believe that for the rabbis and anyone who's involved in this, there is lots of feeling of, of responsibility, of a great merit to be involved in this issue, in this idea, in this, this act of conversion. Okay, I, I think you've, that last sentence says it all. We consider, and I, I sit in the Bed Din in London, which is famous uh, for its Maseh Bed Din um, 
with all things, but in particular with conversions, where we demand a high standard, but our attitude is it's a mitzvah and it's a schut and it's a merit to be able to perform correct conversions. We are not of the view that um, sort of we really don't want anyone, everybody's a pain, go away. That's not our view. Our view is we're quite happy to take in the people who are worthy of it. But we are also doing a disservice to people when they're not willing to really practice as observant Jews and to accept them. First of all, it's not a valid conversion, so we are uh, tricking them, we're tricking our community, we're allowing them to marry when they shouldn't marry, so we're doing a major disservice to both them and the community. So the only service is do a good job, everyone should be practicing, observant, we're not stupid. We can't expect everyone to be Haredi Meir Shorim, that's not practical. They can be modern, they can be people of the modern world with careers, etc. But they've got to be religious, they've got to be observant. We, we're not particular on dress, code, we're not particular, but just observant. And we don't put labels on, we don't have a, a modern a, a orthodox or this orthodox or that. Someone came to me, can we convert to modern orthodox? We don't convert to modern, we convert to Judaism. Rabbi Geli, you're mentioning, of course, uh, the observance of the Jewish halakha, Jewish law. How do you answer the, the, the classic question where someone is converting and you're telling him you have to become observant and then he says, why does my neighbor, uh, a Jew, why is he able to be non-observant? He can do what basically whatever he wants. And for, for you and for everyone, he's still Jewish and I have to go through all this and I have to become observant. How do you answer that, that classic question? Okay, okay, so if it's a question, it's a question. There's a very simple answer. Um, I, I say the following. Um, someone who is a resident of a country and he commits a crime, he will not be deported from the country. Someone from out of the country who wants to come in and he wants a passport but he's a criminal, he won't get it. So basically, if you're born Jewish, Yisrael Afapisha Chata Yisrael, so he's Jewish and they're born Jewish, they're Jewish. It's, it's, it's a status issue. And what I try to tell people, it's not a character issue. So people who come, but why don't you accept? I'm rejected. It's not a character issue, it's a status issue. It's a technical issue. You're born Jewish, you're born Jewish, and that's it. You're not born Jewish, there's only one way of becoming Jewish. How did Jews become Jewish? They stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and they said, Naseh and Ishma were totally committed and dedicated to Judaism. You want to do the same thing? Bechavod, you join us. We want you, we love you. But if you want to come here and not to say Naseh and Ishma, we're not prepared to be committed, but we still want to be Jewish, we don't have such a system. So we really apologize. We love you, but we're unable to attend to you. Rabbi Geli, thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure being with you. Erev Tov.